Well, welcome to Race Face TV and this week's episode of Who's Next. Today we're going to be going up to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where we find quarter midget driver Boston Oliver. Boston, how are you doing this afternoon? Awesome. How are you? I'm doing great, man. A lot of cool stuff there behind you, man. I really like that. I, I got to ask you real Thank quick you. about that guitar trophy. Where did you get that at? So I was at MCQ Memorial Music City Quarter Midget Association where I set all fast times and won all races and we got the championship. Well, I have to say I've interviewed a lot of quarter midget drivers. That is the coolest trophy that I've ever seen. So I got to ask you this question. Okay. You didn't have any uh, thoughts about doing like a Kyle Bush that he did with Sam or with uh, Sam Bass's guitar at Bristol, did you? Didn't you didn't ever think at all about taking that guitar and smashing it like some rock star, did you? No, sir. Because it, I, it's like yeah, it was my first. It's my first championship, and I want to destroy it. Yeah, that that is it cool. Very very cool. So so Boston, at what age did you actually start racing? I, re I started racing at seven years old and won my first red plate race. All right. Well, that's cool. So tell me which QMA club do you call your home base? MCQMRA Music City Court of Major Association. So I'm gathering with a, living in Murfreesboro with a name like Music City, that, that association's got to be where? In Nashville? Yes, sir. All right, so you probably have racers from all over, I'm going to call it like mid-south that probably come in and compete at that track. Yes, sir. So let me ask you a question when we're talking about tracks. What is your favorite track to race at so far in your young racing career? My favorite is Indianapolis because it's my first national and we ran junior Honda there and it was awesome. I like taking the big lap. The big lap. I, 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 every driver I talk to talks about that big lap at Indianapolis. So, what was it like to to actually be on 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 that racetrack and know that you know Indy cars run 230, 235 miles an hour there? What was it like? It was awesome. I mean, we we put up a car that we we did a 160 with a big gear in it, and it took off fast. And we almost hit a person. All right. Very cool. So let me ask you a question. On your weekly deals, do you run both on dirt and asphalt, or are you just an asphalt racer? Um, no, sir. I race asphalt, but I'm, I want to get into a dirt a little bit. You want to be a dirt a little bit. So I understand that you made your first trip to Victory Lane at one month old. Now, explain that to the viewers. So my people, he had a late model and he let Michael House um, race it. And um, he went to Victory Lane and my people, he was holding me while we were in Victory Lane. Well, that's awful cool. And I've talked to a lot of drivers before. And you know what? I made my first race when I was six months old. I wasn't a driver. Um, my, my parents actually took me to a dirt track in a little place called Granite City, Illinois, right outside of St. Louis. And uh, but you, you, you had me beat by five months. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. So tell us a little bit about your Peepaw and how he's involved with your racing currently. Um, he he was a crew chief for trucks and um, a little bit of cup, I think. OK, so he's got a lot and of later. experience. So when he talks, yeah. you listen, right? He's kind of like Merrill Lynch. When he's talking, you got to listen sure. to what he says. Well, that sure. that's that's great to have somebody with that type of experience behind you. So every week we play this little game, and it's called Get to Know Boston in 60 Seconds. Are you ready to play? Sure. All right. So here we go. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Um, cheese. Cheese pizza. Okay. What's your favorite video game? Two, NBA 2K18. Okay, your favorite TV show? Uh, tank. Your favorite color? 
My favorite color is orange because it's been on my car for a long time and I like how it looks. All right. What? Who's your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero is Batman. Batman. All right. Favorite racing series? My favorite racing series is K&N. NASCAR K&N. Great answer. So who's your favorite race car driver? Uh, Kyle Busch and Dale Jr. Kyle Busch and Dale Jr. Now, last question. Do you have a pet? Yes, sir. I have three. You have three? Checkers, Checkers Bristol, and um, Lilith. All right. So let's talk a, a little bit about your quarter midget racing career. So in 2015, you ran what's called the Red Rookie, and you won um, in that division, and you moved up immediately to what they call a Blue Rookie. And 2016, yes, you ran Junior Honda with 11 feature wins and your first championship, and I'm gathering that's what that cool guitar is for. Yes, sir. And then in 2017, you ran Heavy Honda with eight feature wins. You were at the Dixie Shootout. You set a new track record, and you ended the season second in points at your Music City Quarter Midget Association. And now in 2018, you're running Heavy Honda and Heavy 160. So tell us a little bit about, fill in some of the gaps here. Talk a little bit about some of the highlights and some of maybe some of the favorite races that you won. My favorite race that I've won was the Dixie Shootout where um, we I went to the rear three times and came back and won the thing, the race. And um, we, um, we set fast um, the track record and um, we pulled and um, we started third because they inverted and um, we got right three times, I think. Well, one, one time we went into the pits and got the chain and two times we got um, wrecked and then we came up to the field and then they had a red flag and I was second and my people was like, you gonna go win that the race? And I said, yes, sir. And then um, we went out there the next couple laps. I took the position, and then I won it in my first Dixie shootout. Oh, that's impressive. So tell me about the mindset that you have to have when you're running, you know, up front, whether you spun out or somebody spun you out and you have to go to the back. You know, a lot of drivers have just get back there and be like, well, there's no way I can come. So you came from the back three times to win that race. What is it? What is the mental um, focus that you have to have to be able to pull that off? You, you basically, you have to be smooth and never give up. It's, it, you can do it. Just never doubt yourself. Never doubt yourself. Great answer. So I'm going to gather that that was probably not only your favorite race, but your most memorable race as well. Sure. So I know that all of, you, all of you younger drivers, because your schedules are so busy, I mean, um, I know that you're getting ready to take a trip to Texas. You've got a trip to Indianapolis coming up. So what sacrifices have you had to make to be able to pursue your racing career? Um, we, we, we had to, I mean, we just had to work our way up to Pass them all and then other things like normal kids do. I basketball. mean, basketball, did basketball, birthdays, and um, baseball games. And my team was in the championship for basketball, and um, would they they won the championship while I was in Florida racing. So the question is, is it, is it all the sacrifices that you have to give up? Is it worth it? Yes, sir. It's really worth it. Okay. So who are your biggest supporters? My Mimi, my people, my Aunt Jody, Sissy, and my mom and my brother. All right. So what are your, what are your plans for the rest of 2018 look like? To run heavy 160 and heavy Honda and try to get next year a world formula. Right All right. There. So again, I think did you did you race at Daytona already this year? 
Yes, sir, we raced two times there. And what was that like, being at the, like the hollow ground of NASCAR, actually in, in several different forms of racing, being at actual Daytona, knowing that you're racing there? What was that like? It was awesome. I mean, I couldn't, it was a dream come true. And um, it's, it's just crazy that you get to go and race it. The big tracks. So Don't I'm wondering, I, I'm wondering why they didn't let you guys take a lap around Daytona. So that would be kind of cool to be in a quarter midget and be like up on those big high banks and turns one, two, three, and four. I mean, those things are like four stories high. The bank and you'd probably flip. <laughs> you'd probably flip <laughs> off, yeah. Well, you guys are probably going fast enough to be able to stay up there. I've seen some, I've seen a lot of go-kart guys race that track. So, um, so let's now look into the future. And what are your racing goals? All right, so I want, I want to race at the fairgrounds with super trucks and late models from the All-American 400. And the next thing that I want to do is go to k and and then go to Monster Energy and then go to trucks. All right, well, you've got a good blueprint already, already laid out for, for such a young age. And let me tell you what. The blueprint is actually actually perfect. You know, get yourself some experience in the late models, maybe some trucks at again at, at the fairground speedway, and then move into that K and N, go to ARCA, you know, maybe ARCA to trucks, trucks Xfinity and up to the NASCAR level. So you have a great blueprint in place, and I, I commend you on that. So your ultimate goal, the series that you have your sights set on in the future, is the NASCAR Monster Energy drink, but you just said that you have your focus right now on the K&N series. So tell me why the K&N series interests you so much. I don't know because it's, um, I feel like that's the start to NASCAR. Well, it is. You know, we've got a, at Race Face here, we have, uh, we have a couple of drivers running the K&N series. We have Anthony Alfredo in that series, and we also have Ryan Vargas in that series. So it is a great, place to be able to get into that bigger, heavier car, but more importantly, it's a great place to be able to go and learn how to be able to use the tires, because that tires is the first introduction to stuff that you've not been running as far as a late model is concerned, so stay on that path. So let me ask you, what does Boston do when you're not racing? Usually, I play guitar and um, I play with my brother and uh, I race. So you can play the guitar? Yes, sir. All right. So do you play any tunes on that trophy guitar or is it just for show? That's just for show. That's just for show. Okay, because I was about to put you on the spot. I was going to be like, all right, take that trophy down and play us a song. All right. So I'm, I'm going to... All right. So tell us something that most people don't know about you. That little secret, maybe. Well, I, I play guitar and I sing and um, that's it. All right, yeah. so where, where do you sing at? Well, I usually sing at home and I went to a talent show one time. How'd that work out for you? Uh, I don't know. We finished second. You finished second? That's not too bad. So we have a singing race car driver now. That'd be something really cool that you could do to kind of put out on your social media pages and stuff like that. So before we end up the show tonight, do you want to talk about any of your sponsors? Yes, sir. I got to thank Bubba Russell Auto Care for all the support and stuff. Billy Cisco Star Towing. First Shot Basketball Foundation, Stuart Morrow for being all of my sponsors, and Jeremy Pate, Cowan, Mike Crafton, Station Girl, AC Plus, Kirby Automotive, Auto Masters, Will Works, Florida Brothers Inc., Hells Mobile Home Parts, CG Enterprises, UltimateQM.com, Robbie Stanley's for the great the best cars around, flash power, 
Wow, that's an impressive list of sponsors. So do you have any websites or Facebooks or any social media things that you want to share with the viewers on how they can actually follow Boston? Yes, sir. BostonOliverRacing.com. Um, Facebook, Boston Oliver Racing, and Instagram, Boston Oliver Racing. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Boston. I want to thank you for being on the show. It sounds to me like you've got everything kind of lined up to really make a run at your dreams, and we wish you all the luck. So here's what I want to ask you. Go down there and win at Texas. Go down there and win at Indy, and if you win one of those big national events, you're going to come back and visit us on the show again? Yes, sir. I will. All right, well, I'm going to hold you to that. So there you have it. Who's next? Boston Oliver, quarter midget racer from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, one of the up-and-coming young drivers in the country. I want to thank all of you for being with us today, and we'll see you back here next week on Who's Next.